Making mistakes and looking for new ways to erase them is a pivotal part of our human nature and the ground basis upon which many discoveries and inventions were made throughout the years. Therefore, it should come as no surprise to us that people have implemented the same attitude when it comes to dealing with writing mistakes as well. Long before erasers, modern versions were invented, people experimented with various options that were at their disposal at the time to try and erase their writing mistakes. Did you know that breadcrumbs were the original pencil erasers? Yes. Back in the day, specifically in Keswick, England in 1564, when the graphite used in pencils was first discovered and used as a writing tool, locals used string to wrap it up to prevent blackening of their hands. Moreover, they used breadcrumbs to try and erase the writing mistakes they made. Crustless breadcrumbs were used as pencil erasers up until the French scientist and explorer Charles-Marie de la Condamine brought quote-unquote Indian rubber back from his explorations in South America, where this rubber was used by tribes as an adhesive. This is when small cubes of rubber began to be used to erase pencil marks. In 1770, English engineer Edward Nairn invented erasers purely by accident, as he inadvertently picked up a piece of rubber instead of breadcrumbs and realized the erasing properties of rubber. He then went on to develop the first widely marketed rubber eraser, which he had sold for the high price of three shillings per half-inch cube. Nonetheless, the rubber he went with was not nearly as efficient as it crumbled when used, smelled bad, and was too sensitive to weather conditions. This made it not much useful or popular as the one that came afterward. In 1839, when Charles Goodyear discovered the process of vulcanization, the method that makes rubber durable, the eraser's game changed entirely and erasers became popular household items. The science behind erasers is as simple as erasers' original discovery. The quote-unquote stickiness of the erasers' molecules is greater than that of the paper's molecules. Therefore, when you rub the eraser on the paper, the graphite marks by the pencil get lifted from the page and stick to the eraser, resulting in erasing. Today, we have erasers of all shapes, colors, and sizes, from the cheaper ones made from synthetic rubber and synthetic soy-based gum to the fancier ones made from vinyl plastic or gum-like materials. The majority of us have probably tried all of these erasers during our school days, but surely the most memorable one is the double-sided blue and pink or reddish-orange eraser whose memories still give us chills. And for good reason. These two-sided classroom staples that had been part of our school supply kits for years are famous for causing us trouble and great distress. As kids, we all heard from our seniors the myth about the two-sided eraser that blew away our little naive minds. The legend we were told stated that one side, the softer, pink side, is meant for erasing pencil marks, while the other, rougher, harder, the blue side, is designed to erase pen or ink marks. And sure enough, when we tried to use the blue side as we were recommended, we ended up with torn pages and the dreadful realizations that we need to start writing our homework all over. The myths we heard which were the reasons behind many ruthlessly torn pages, as it turns out, were just that. Myths. Because the blue part of the eraser was never meant to erase pen or ink marks. Talk about a childhood lie that has its place right next to Santa Claus is in Rio. It appears that as there are two sides to most rubbers and erasers, there are also two sides to the legend behind erasers usage. The truth is, it wasn't the engineer's fault, nor is our eraser broken. We have just misinterpreted what the blue side is meant to erase. The soft end of our erasers, the pinkish, reddish, or orange end, is meant to be used to erase pencil marks from light grades of paper with precision. It is softer for that reason, to avoid paper getting torn. The harder end of our erasers, the blue end, is meant to be used to erase pencil marks from heavy grades of papers, such as the grainy art kind. On these papers, pencil marks are harder to be removed with regular erasers, so the blue end of the eraser was purposefully designed harder to allow pencil marks to be removed easily from harder grades of paper. Therefore, the blue part was never meant for removing ink or pen marks from paper. It was all just one big, very common misunderstanding. With this, we have finally debunked one of our childhood's greatest mysteries. What does the blue part of the eraser do? If you enjoyed learning about erasers and debunking the myths around their blue side and want to learn more interesting facts and insights, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button.